Super glue reacts quickly and impressively to graphite powder or to baking soda. In today's video, we're going to try mixing together large quantities of all of those. Nate, we've done stuff with super glue and baking soda in the past, namely ramen. Yeah, we've done that. We've a also we've taken like a whole eight ounces of super glue and poured it into a cup of water with a lot of baking soda. I was in gonna it. say you've done stuff with water and it does crazy cool stuff when you watch this stuff just catalyze. It's yeah. weird. Well, I wanted to do some similar things with that, but less water today and more just powders. All right. I think we've talked in the past a little bit in some of those videos about how baking soda reacts immediately with super glue and you can actually use it for like small repairs as a sort of instant shapeable plastic. Something very similar happens with graphite powder. There's a few different forms of graphite powder. Some are made as a dry lubricant. This one says it's supposed to be with epoxy and I'm not sure what the point is. I assume that's just to dye it black, but we're gonna try mixing it with super glue and see what happens. We'll do it in the small scale mm -hmm. and then we'll scale it up to larger scale and see what happens. Um, we may also try making some molds, seeing if we can add color to it. What happens if we combine both powders and the super glue. So we've got some very thin super glue and some medium thin super glue. Mm -hmm. And we're just gonna We're gonna go mini mad scientist today and just see what we can come up with. There's our gluing surface. Just gonna take a little bit of baking soda here. We've got our graphite powder, nice and black as you can see. A little pile of that. Now when this stuff catalyzes, it actually heats up. So I wanna kinda see what the temperature change is gonna be here. 72, 0.4, 72.3 Fahrenheit on both of those. So we're just gonna take some super glue and we're gonna start dripping it. And this is the thinner super glue, so it should get into the powder. And with baking soda, it usually reacts in like half a second. It just, it goes in and catalyzes. The graphite takes a little bit longer. Let's see what the difference is here. So you can see those fumes coming up off of it. 111 degrees. Definitely warm. It jumps temperature just so fast. This one spot is nearly 200 degrees Fahrenheit, and then it drops back down. There we go, right there. We hit 200 degrees over here. That's very warm. Yep. All right, let's try putting some into the graphite, see how that goes. Just kind of sits See, there. it doesn't get absorbed nearly as much. No, it looks like it's dissolving. So, so now it is soaking in. Okay, now we're just gonna let that sort of sit and see what it does. There we go, yep, and all of a sudden. How it's dry looking and that's just spreading. Oh, wow, wow. It just. It went way up, I'm It assuming. jumped from 74 to 80, then 90, then 124. Yeah, that's burning hot to touch it. You can see, yeah, this is now basically a plastic, the same way that this is no longer powder. This is just plastic -y. So this does the same thing. It just doesn't happen as quickly. So what I thought was interesting about this is that with the baking soda, and super glue, generally the technique if you're trying to do this is you'll put the baking soda down into whatever crack or fissure you're trying to repair and then you'll just drip a tiny bit of super glue onto it. It gets sucked down into the baking soda and then hardens immediately. It doesn't dissolve, it just absorbs it. It's very yeah, odd. It fills all little gaps. Now with the graphite, you have time to sort of mix it up into a paste and you could then take that paste and apply it to whatever it is you're trying to repair. So different color and probably some different method of application. Um, if you're using this nice thin super glue, you probably could do the same thing where you put the graphite in and then add the super glue, but you have the option of making it into a paste and applying it afterward. I think we can explore a little bit more. You mm -hmm. want to try a couple other types of powder? Just want to see if anything else is going to work similarly. We've got baking soda, which is used in a lot of the stuff we do, but it's also something that can be used in the kitchen. Graphite's an interesting, it's just graphite powder, the same stuff that you would find in a pencil. In fact, the first thing I thought when I saw this is, this is every art student's nightmare because the last thing that you want is graphite powder on your paper while you're working. I've seen beautiful work done with it, you know, if you really need that gradation. So this is just about a 50-50 mixture of the two, and I just am curious if it's going to do more of the quick reacting. I think it is. I think that the baking soda is going to cause it to react very quickly, regardless of how much graphite is in there. All right, let's get them absorbed in, and yep, that's solid. And you saw maybe those little wisps of smoke coming off. Let's try making a bigger pile of it. It's going a little bit slower, but kind of like one second instead of one half of one second. Now I've got two types of super glue here, and one of them is a medium super glue, and I want to see if that reaction is different with the medium super glue. It's not going to get down into the gaps between all of the powders as easily. 
it's still fairly thin, it's just not water thin. Down at the bottom of this, I can feel it's already solidified, but I think it made sort of like a dish that's just holding the rest of this. We saw that it took a while for the thin superglue to react. I'm not sure, but I think that the thicker superglue is gonna take a lot longer to react. And this has no baking soda in it, so it's not reacting immediately. So I think we're gonna be able to turn all of this into like a paste, and then we'll see how long it takes to actually catalyze. That took a couple of minutes, but I mean, same thing. That completely solidified and then like the exact shape that I left it in. So made it into a paste that held its shape Still pretty warm. well, got very warm, and then it just solidifies. All right, you wanted to try a couple other types of powder. A couple of other things. So I want to try powdered sugar. I think that's going to be super interesting if it does work. And then this one is kind of going to be an experiment. I'm pretty sure this is our aluminum dust. You can use aluminum dust in silicone molds and pour resin if you want to make anything that looks very, very metallic uh, without having to worry about airbrushing color or anything like that later. I want to know if you can do that with super glue because what a quick way to make any sort of tiny little props or pieces for, uh, say, a cosplay costume piece, anything like that. I want to see if this will work. Powdered sugar first. Well, I've made a mush. So it's definitely not reacting the same way that no. the baking soda does. It tried to dissolve it, but also not. I'm gonna go with no on this one. Oh. Cinnamon. Wow, whoa, whoa, whoa! Cinnamon is reacting quite a bit. That, yes. that bubbled and fizzed. How hot did that get? That was so neat. Okay, okay. Oh, I, I saw 190. So that's about what it seems to get to every time it catalyzes, about 200. You guys will notice that we've got the laser off of what we're pointing on. It is not calibrated, right? Oh. More than I meant. More than I meant. So cinnamon awesome. reacts pretty violently. We can use the thicker stuff, which should go slower. See if we can make a good paste with our cinnamon and our super glue. Okay, so we do have a paste, but it's very different texture. When we mix this up with the graphite, it's a very, very smooth paste. This is like a grainy, powdery kind of texture. Yeah. It's definitely not as easy to like spread or mix as the graphite powder is. Let's give that a second. I bet that's gonna start bubbling and fizzing and reacting and how long it's gonna take. There it goes. So not as much bubbling but a lot of heat. This is probably the Jesus, largest yeah. amount of mass we've had so mm -hmm. far. And so that got really hot. All right, so this is one that I'm actually very excited to try. This is aluminum powder, and Nate actually is the one who showed me this trick. You can take aluminum powder, dust the inside of a silicone mold when you're pouring resin, and you actually get sort of this nice, it's almost like just a, a matte gray coat sort of, and it makes it very easy to make a metallic design for cosplay pieces, armor pieces, little decorations. I wanna know if this is a quicker, cheaper way to do that. Maybe not entirely cheaper, because super glue in large quantities isn't necessarily cheap. This bottle was about $23. But maybe you have a little tube of super glue sitting around and not necessarily resin. You don't have 24 hours to let your resin sit or cure, and you just need a tiny piece of costume cosplay, a little fake blade or something really quick. Let's see if you could use this. Seeps over it. Doesn't necessarily mix in. Well, it's thickening, it's not going fast. All right, so here I've got some aluminum and a little bit of baking soda. I'm gonna try and mix those together, get a nice homogenous mixture, and then I'll add the super glue. <laughs> Done. <laughs> you didn't even get a chance to finish stirring. Well, yeah, so the baking soda continues to make it react nearly instantly even when it's mixed in with other stuff. We can try casting with that and see mm -hmm. if it's something that we can polish. Well, you picked up this little silicone mold that's mm -hmm. usually made for little bits of candy or whatever. Yep. We wanna see if we can cast in this using a few of these different methods and see what we can pull out of it. Can we get you know, a, a baking soda sort of pendant? Can we use the metal and then polish it up afterward? What happens if we use cinnamon? We're now gonna try because we have that. So I wanna try a fleur de lis, but what I wanna do with this is I actually want to do what you've taught me is to coat it in the dust first and then baking soda. So by coating it in the aluminum dust first, hopefully we should get that shine before mixing in whatever else we wanna do. Oh, 
Well, that was way too much super glue. Obviously, it flowed and poured over the sides. Holy cow, 250. It looks like you started a little fire. It's also very possible that while there is a good and clean way to get a nice result out of this, we would just have to experiment with it for a long time. Mm -hmm. Although, there we go. That looks fantastic. At least the surface. Inside, it may have a lot of imperfections and problems, but on the surface, that looks beautiful. Here's what we're gonna try. We've got some quadruple lot steel wool. And we're gonna see if we can sort of buff into this aluminum powder and get any sort of shine on it. So you can see the raised portions where I was able to hit with the steel wool, like this, are shinier, more metallic looking than the sunken portions where the steel wool didn't get. And that's really cool. You can get sort of like a highlight. You know, it doesn't look like brand new polished metal, but it really can look like metal has been worn and then you just hit with a little bit of steel wool or something to bring up the highlights. So I have here a little bit of baking soda mm -hmm. on the plate. I'm going to see if we can add some color. Just got a few drops of food coloring here. I'm just gonna try and keep mixing it up and see if I can get the color evenly distributed. But right here, I'm gonna add some super glue. Oh, that still gets absorbed and reacts maybe even faster, honestly. Not much is supposed to stick to silicone, but sometimes super glue overcomes that. Except. That is a really pretty print though. Well, using this much, I definitely ripped the crud out of this mold, so be careful. Make sure you're using more baking soda than almost anything else. All right, Cosplay World, if you need tiny details done in two minutes or less and you need them to be dang durable, we've got you covered. I'm gonna see if I can make a cinnamon one. Cinnamon coins! Definitely soaks in with the cinnamon in a different way. I'm very glad this was the only thing we wanted these molds for. Oh boy, not great for the mold, but got a good cast out of that. Graphite and super glue, not so good for silicone molds. I can't get that out at all. That's just stuck glued to it. Okay, I wanna scale this up. Okay. I wanna see what happens if we mix a lot of the graphite with a lot of the glue. And by a lot, I mean the rest of this bottle, which is still 75% full. This is why I've opened all the doors and windows. So I'm gonna just pour out mm, like that much graphite. That's approximately equal volume, I think, to the amount of glue we have. We need to get more. both of our heat meters on what you're about to do. Imagine getting your hand just stuck in that. Oh boy. Cured. Ah, it's going, it's going. The fumes. Back up, back up. It's so very bright on the floor. It's about to become very unpleasant in here. almost, almost 300. Now we're hitting the... Yeah, this 275. Is, this is flashing, I just saw it at 299. Oh, it's just said over 300. I'm taking outside. 250 again, 260, what are you at? Uh, 214? I 280. That's the thing, it heats up like so fast. It's just like in a blink of an eye, but then, stay away from the fumes. But oh, then man. it cools down nearly as Didn't fast. Didn't even like hit me directly, it's just in the air. Yep, you're Ooh. too close to it. So that was really cool. Yep. It went faster than we wanted, so we have the other super glue, which is slightly thicker and takes longer, we saw to catalyze. So this time we're gonna do the same thing with the other super glue, but we wanna try something. We were getting like 300 degrees. We did, we hit 300. 300 degrees Fahrenheit, which is well into cooking temperatures for a lot of foods. So what we're gonna do is mix up this paste and we've got a couple of eggs. We're gonna like roll them around in the paste and get them nice and covered. And then we're just gonna see if we can cook eggs using super glue. Oh, no! I don't see any cooked nope. egg. I think it got hot enough, and but it didn't cold. stay that way. Like, it didn't stay hot. I guess this is maybe, like, some of it started. The white, yeah, the white means that it started on the outside, but remember what we said, it heats up so fast all at the same time, but it cools rapidly, about 10 seconds. You only probably, I would say, get three to five seconds of that intense heat. I think it's actually glued to the porch. Probably. It is, it's glued to the porch. All right, guys, that's it with our super glue experiments for the day, but you know we've always got more for you to see. Click that box at the top to check out our most recent video, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.